primate flights, lost missions to the moon, and unfortunately, lost astronauts. It all happened in January. On January 21st, 1960, Little Joe 1B launched from Wallops Island. It was a psychological flight designed to give doctors data on how a primate would react to a rapid deceleration and change of direction in a spacecraft, say, during an abort. The subject, in this case, was a rhesus monkey named Miss Sam. The mission went off without a hitch. The spacecraft attained its peak altitude of 9.3 miles and traveled a total of 11.7 miles. The capsule and a monkey were returned to Wallops Island within half an hour. A year and ten days later, on January 31, 1961, NASA launched another primate flight. This time it was Ham the Chimpanzee in a Mercury spacecraft on a Redstone rocket, the exact same configuration that would take Al Shepard and Gus Grissom on their suborbital flights. The spacecraft rose smoothly for the first two minutes and 17 seconds before things got dicey. The Redstone devoured its fuel in just 134 and a half seconds. That's way faster than its designer, Werner von Braun, intended. Sensing a change in its engine chamber pressure before the preset shutdown time, the Redstone's brain triggered the abort system. Small rockets fired and pulled Ham and his capsule away from a perfectly safe rocket. The added thrust of the abort system carried Ham to a peak of 157 miles and exposed him to more than 17 Gs. That's far more than mission planners expected. It wasn't the most comfortable flight, but it was survivable. At the time, Al Shepard was in line to make the first manned flight on a Mercury-Redstone combination, and he figured that if Ham the Chimp could do the flight, so could he. He lobbied hard to get on the next Mercury-Redstone flight that was then scheduled in March, but Werner von Braun wanted another unmanned test of the rocket to make sure that it wouldn't give a man the same rough ride as it had the Chimp. Unfortunately for Shepard, von Braun won, but that's a story I'm going to save until March. The next year, on January 26, 1962, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory launched Ranger 3, the third mission in the program designed to impact the moon. It was also the third failure. The mission ran into problems almost immediately when the Atlas rocket's upper stage burned too long, putting the spacecraft on track not to impact the moon, but to miss it entirely. Even a mid-course correction couldn't salvage the mission, and engineers' attempts to turn the spacecraft around and snap a shot of the moon's far side were in vain. The only pictures they got back were pictures of the vast blackness of space. And of course, January's the anniversary of the Apollo 1 fire. On January 27, 1967, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee climbed into their Apollo spacecraft for a routine test called the Plugs Out Test. It was a test of the spacecraft systems running off batteries with the hatch closed and cabin pressurized. But a wire over the piping from the urine collection system arced. In the pure oxygen environment, and with everything inside soaked in pure oxygen, that spark almost instantly turned into a raging fire. The crew succumbed to smoke inhalation within a minute of first reporting seeing a fire. The fire led to substantial design changes in the Apollo spacecraft, including a new hatch and a mixed gas environment during launch. Oxygen and nitrogen were far less supportive of combustion than pure oxygen. Manned Apollo flights picked up with Apollo 7 in October of 1968. And that's all for January. See you next month.